Hello everyone. This is going to be a tutorial for how to create a terrain shader in Unity for a mesh uh, of a terrain that you might want to export from Blender. Uh, this video is going to be a follow-up to a previous video I did where I showed how to paint a terrain in Blender and then export it. And in that video I showed how to then import it into the Godot game engine. But uh, some people were, were interested in Unity, so I thought I'd put together a video for that too. Uh, in this video, we're going to uh, show how to do it the, uh, I guess, older way by typing in code. I was looking into the shader, uh, the visual, sh the shader graph system that Unity has. Unfortunately, that does not run on my computer. It uh, crashes as soon as I try to open it up. So we're not going to be doing that. But uh, the nice thing about this other system is it's uh, a lot less heavy. I mean, there's a, a lot less that you need to import and it should work on lower end systems and be a lot more accessible. Anyhow, well, let's get started. Uh, you can see right now we are in uh, the art directory here where I have all my assets. So let's begin by dragging our terrain into the window here. And let's put that at zero. So how do we go about making a terrain shader for this? Well. Let's uh, right click by giving it a material first. We're going to go to create and material. And let's call that terrain material. All right, and we can then just to make it look a little bit different than from the default, let's set that to red. And now if we drag that onto our terrain, you can now see our material is now on our terrain. Now we want the shader part. So let's right click and create a shader by going to um, shader standard surface shader and this will create a, a default basic shader for us let's call this terrain shader and uh, let's double click to open that in visual studio so here is the uh, basic shader that you get by default from unity uh, what we're going to do is edit this uh, to give us the terrain features we need because the basic shader is actually pretty close to uh, what we ultimately need. Uh, first thing we're going to do, oh, uh, see we set the name here. Uh, this might not be terrain shader. Uh, if it isn't, then make sure to change it to what you need. Uh, but um, all right, that bit is correct. So if we come back into material, and you can see how by default it is a standard shader. We can click on that, come down to custom, and find the terrain shader that we just created and click on that. And now it is pulling from our custom shader instead of the standard shader. Uh, it might not seem like it at first, but it will become obvious once we start editing this guy. So let's double click on him again. And I already went through and I made a few changes. So I'm just going to cut and paste the uh, bits that are important so you don't have to watch me typing this whole thing out. So the first thing we're going to do is come over here and look at the uh, the main texture, um, uh, well the main texture uh, of the default shader. And if we actually click on that, let's click back on our terrain material. If we drag let's say our patchy grass onto the albedo here, you can see that by default it already lets us put a um, terrain on our shader. Let's change the color back to white so it's easier to see. But you can see that by default it is already rendering that in the main texture slot. Well, we're going to replace this. Instead of calling that main texture, we're going to have a mask texture, which is going to be for uh, this thing here that shows us where all the different uh, parts of our terrain are going to be painted, as well as one slot for each of the texture layers that we're going to be drawing on top of it. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is change the samplers, and uh, because these bits up here, these control what you see in the uh, input window. If we, what you see in the inspector. Uh, the sh uh, where is it? The samplers are where the data actually enters. So you can think of this as being the user interface and it hooks into here. 
which is where the data actually shows up. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is add in some UVs for our two textures. Uh, Unity has this weird feature, uh, let's call it a feature, where you're only allowed two UV sets, which is a little bit annoying which, because that means uh, we can't adjust the UVs on these textures independently. It should be enough for our purposes. One UV set for the mask and one UV set for everything else should be all we need. Uh, but it would be nice if uh, this restriction wasn't in place. Uh, anyhow, uh, that's just me griping. Uh, we now have our data coming in. We have the texture data and the UV data. Let's actually do something with that data. And that is what this function down here is for, the surf function. So you can see by default uh, what it's doing in this line here is it's grabbing the color from the main texture at that UV location. Well, that's, let's replace that with uh, our lines here. Now what it's gonna do is it's gonna look in the mask texture at the mask UV coordinate to get the blending uh, vector. And uh, we're then gonna use this blend vector to uh, blend them, but uh, not yet. Uh, we're still getting the raw data. So this line is just going to get the um, look in layer zero at the right UVs to get the color. It's gonna look in layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four. And we're gonna use the layer zero uh, UVs for all of these lookups. That should be fine. Uh, it's, uh, it's just a limitation of Unity. Uh, we can't create unique UVs for each of these layers. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if there's a workaround for that, but uh, we, we don't need it, so let's just ignore it. Anyhow, th there is the data fetched. The next thing we need to do is actually blend all of that together. And we're going to do that in these lines using the lerp function. LERP stands for linear, linearly interpolate. And what that means is the last factor here, you can think of it like a switch that goes from zero to one. Whenever it's zero, we get mostly what's on the left side. Whenever it's one, we get mostly what's on the right side. So what this is going to do, it's going to look in layer zero and layer one. If this is close to zero, it's going to draw mostly from layer zero. If this is close to one, it's going to draw mostly from layer one. And uh, it's going to store that in C. Then we get down to the next line, it's going to do the same thing, except instead of looking at the red channel, it's going to look at the green channel, and it's going to alert between C, which is what we calculated on the previous line, if this is close to zero, or layer two, if this is closer to one. And same thing on the next line, except now it's lerping uh, with the blue channel. Uh, the last line is a little bit different. You can see I've moved the position of the C, and that's because uh, in our shader, because of the way Blender handles things, uh, we decided to make the alpha channel, uh, you know, wh wherever it is transparent, uh, that's where we wanted the texture to be. So it's uh, basically the same idea, except instead of going from zero to one, we're going from one to zero. And uh, finally, what we're, going to, what we're going to do after we've blended all that together is we're going to pump that into the albedo channel. And uh, this is close, but we're also we're going to add in one final little bit, we're going to add that color back in just in case you wanted to be able to multiply the final result by a color. And uh, th this should be good. I'm gonna press Control S to save that. Let's hop back over here to Unity. Oh, and uh, we got an error, I think. Oh no, uh, we just haven't set up our uh, materials yet. Looks fine, okay. Let's begin by, okay, and if you look at all these, so we said this was going to change the inspector. Here are all those showing up in the inspector. So let's drag the terrain mask over into the mask area. And let's bring the grass into the first layer and the uh, patchy grass into the second layer, dirt into the third layer, uh, the roots into the fourth layer and the rocky terrain into the fifth layer. And you might notice that this is a little bit zoomed out, so let's just change the layer zero tiling to 20. And that should give us the right UVs. And now it looks just like what we had in Blender before we exported it. 
and um, you can change the tiling of the mask. I would not recommend that unless you really want to do something weird. Uh, so just leave that at one. And these others don't actually do anything. Uh, again, that's a unity limitation with the uh, legacy stand, with the, uh, the way the shaders work. But that, in a nutshell, is how you create your terrain. And at this point, you can just go ahead and use it like any other mesh object. So I hope that was useful to all the Unity users out there, and thanks for watching.